Herman and April Moncrief were high school sweethearts. After 10 years of dating, they said, I do. Both were Christians and had high expectations for their marriage. Our dating life was such a fairy tale. I mean, I just thought it was going to be this beautiful 50 year <laughs> event. The first, I would say, four or five years, and man, it was just like, it was still like we were on uh, courtship. We were still dating. Five years into their marriage, April was ready for kids, but Herman was reluctant. When they did get pregnant, they were shocked to find out they were having twins. And I remember the doctor saying, I see two heartbeats, and normally people would be excited, and I was. But I called him at work to tell him, and it was silent. He was totally silent, because we're planners. It really just threw us for a loop. We planned the pregnancy, but we didn't plan two babies. Their children, Asia and Bryce, were born in March of 2005. Immediately, the pressure of being new parents created tension. I was mama, he was daddy. Those were our roles, not wife, not husband. We kind of forgot about each other. And so we just focused on, on the children. Herman found his escape through work. Usually, if things are not going right or if um, I just want to get away, you know, there was always something to do. So I just, I just go to work. You know, so I'd work Saturdays, I'd work Sunday afternoons. Resentful of Herman's work schedule, April lashed out verbally and fought for control in the marriage. As soon as he hit the door, I was like, get a baby, I'm tired, I need help, I need this. I wouldn't let him rest, he couldn't relax. So the, our household at that time was really just, it was like walking on, e on, on eggshells for both of us. We were not talking or we were bickering. I mean, it was like two, those two um, extremes and that was really it. I think at a certain point, I became one of these guys that's just really numb, right? So whatever you say, it didn't matter. Most times I wasn't even listening. April repeatedly threatened Herman with divorce. But I think part of me probably did want the divorce, but I, I didn't. And in my heart of hearts, I didn't. I kind of wanted to scare him into, you know, the ultimatum. And after the 50th time, I was just really trying to get his attention. Herman eventually reached his breaking point. You know, consistently, um, you know, twice a week, three times a week. You know, I want a divorce, I want out, I'm tired, I want a divorce. I was just to the point where, you know, hey, this is what you want, this is what I'm gonna give you. Not for one second, I, I didn't think that we would end up divorced. I should have, but not for one second did I think so. When he said, okay, I'll give you what you want, I'm done. You know, the pride in me was like, fine, but inside I was screaming like, no, I don't want this. I didn't take the time to, um, you know, to really, um, pray about it and take the time to, you know, uh, consult God and understand, you know, what's his role in this whole situation. And I was just like, nope, I'm not doing any counseling. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just signing. In 2006, the divorce was final. Reality hit for Herman when April moved two hours away to be closer to family. That's when I felt a huge sense of loss. When you're basically in a place of solitude and you've got a lot of time to think, um, you know, a lot of late nights and, I mean, there's no one around but you. I mean, you have a lot of time to think. I mean, you had a lot of time to pray and uh, you get a level of clarity. Um, I think that's unmatched. I remember specifically stuffing um, covers or sheets underneath their door and because I would go into my room and cry so loud. I cried in that house probably for the first month. Herman drove to see the children almost every weekend. And during his visits, Herman and April spent time alone again. The kids were away. I knew they were safe. They were with my parents. Um, I didn't worry about them. So now I could focus on this and he could focus on me. And so we started to kind of rekindle the, the magic that was that was gone when the, the babies came out. I don't even think I ever stopped loving her, I'm saying. And I, I, I can say that honestly. And so, and that's when I really said, okay, like, what do you want? What do you, what do I need to do here? What do you want me to do? After almost nine months, Herman and April decided to give their marriage a second chance. They saw a Christian counselor and prayed together regularly. I think it was a, it was a tough road back because we both had to basically humble ourselves. Uh, it was very candid. It was very open. Uh, it was very healing. Herman and April completed their counseling just a month before their original anniversary date. 
So on October 6, 2007, they remarried. I will tell people that second time was just the most magnificent thing ever because God was truly there. Like Jesus was, I felt it, we felt it. To stand up there and uh, be able to, you know, once again recite your vows in front of in front of the Lord and um, in front of the people that we care the most about, uh, it was a it was a moving experience. You know, to go from such a dark place to such a you know place of joy and jubilation. Today, the Moncriefs want other couples to know the hope they found in their darkest hour. Like. You can't go through what we've been through and not, and not acknowledge him, that he healed and restored. Jesus did a miraculous thing for us, and he can do it for anybody. Uh, stop trying to change it yourself. I would say have some faith um, in Jesus Christ. Take the time to commune with him. Take the time to um, you know, commune together in Christ with your mate um, and pray uh, and pray without ceasing and he will move it he will change it I mean if you believe and you have faith he will